just to briefly describe our, our long-term goal is to develop low-cost sustainable treatments for chronic diseases related um, to aging, and particularly things like obesity. And so to do that, we've engineered bacteria to release therapeutic compounds. And for obesity, the compound that we're using is, a, is an appetite-suppressing lipid called NAPE. And NAPE is normally made in the gut of people in response to feeding, and it helps to signal that they're full so they can stop eating. And in obese people, it, it appears that at least in some people, that they don't make enough of this compound. So we wanted to use the gut bacteria to increase the levels of NAPE and help these people so that it would help them feel full and they would eat less. And so in studies that we published last year, we showed using mice that if we fed the mice these bacteria that were making it, that we could help uh, inhibit the amount of obesity that occurred on a high-fat diet. And we also were able to improve their, their glucose tolerance and also um, help prevent fatty liver disease. So the experiments that we showed uh, at the conference yesterday showed that in order for these bacteria to have their effect, the, the mice had to actually be able to convert that NAPE into an active metabolite. So if, if the mice didn't have this enzyme that converted the NAPE to the active metabolite, it no longer had the effect. But we could overcome that by further engineering our bacteria so they had that enzyme. And therefore, they could actually make this active metabolite. And then even in, in the mice that lacked the enzyme, we could we would, were able to inhibit the obesity. So right now, um, all of our studies have been done in mice. But our eventual goal is to go to humans. But to do that, of course, we'll have to have approval from the FDA. And before we can do that, we have to do a number of more tests and for safety. You can imagine that these bacteria, since they're making an appetite-suppressing compound, uh, we need to worry about, for instance, if someone was already very lean or a very uh, young person, if they were to get these bacteria, that might have some adverse effects. But so we're, we're going ahead with that testing in, in the mice and small animals to, to see what the effects of bacteria would be in those conditions. But our eventual goal is, is hopefully to be able to treat people who are obese or that have lost weight and want to keep that weight off so that we can prevent these chronic diseases that are related to obesity, like heart disease and diabetes. Yeah, so I mean, there's certainly a lot of work trying to identify certain uh, what we might call wild type bacteria, bacteria that already exist in, in the guts of lean people that might have this effect. But I would say so far, it's been quite difficult to identify those bacteria. There have been some candidates, um, and sometimes that data has looked pretty good, and sometimes it hasn't. So, but it's always been a relatively modest effect. Um, and so we felt like by engineering in this metabolite, we might have stronger effects, and it might be um, more persistent and, and act in a larger range of obese people. Yeah, so one of the things that we want to focus on is that when the bacteria lives inside the gut, it's in a very warm environment, nutrient-rich, um, there are a lot of specific things that allow that bacteria to flourish. Whereas um, when it's excreted, it's, it's in a, an air environment, which is toxic to many bacteria. Um, there's less nutrients. And so what we want to do is, is cripple the bacteria in a way that makes it very difficult for them to live outside the gut and therefore to be spread. But, it, but that it wouldn't really harm their ability to live inside the gut of a person that was deliberately given the bacteria for treatment. We have, um, but it's, it's been quite slow. Yeah, so, I mean, one possibility would be simply to give um, the nape itself, um, you know, 
to date, the way that it has to be given is through an intraperitoneal injection. And it would have to be given every day or perhaps several times a day, um, which is not the ideal way uh, of giving compounds. So one of the advantages of bacteria is that, particularly if we can get them to colonize, that a person wouldn't have to take a drug every day. In fact, they might not have to take it for many months at a time once they have the bacteria colonized. So it would, it would be this you know, very sustainable um, treatment. The other thing that we've noticed is that it appears that we need much less of a compound once being delivered by the bacteria. And that's probably because the bacteria are very close to the site where it needs to act. And so that you don't need as much of a compound. Of course, that may limit the number of adverse effects as well. So if I understand what you're saying is, would it be better to have uh, multiple strains of bacteria that we're making and can make? Um, that might be true. Um, it's probably from a regulatory standpoint that would be um, more difficult. And so, I mean, at the moment, we would only be pursuing the monoculture. Yeah. There, there's an, a number of steps, and I think um, the regulatory pathway right now is, is not clear, so I, I wouldn't really want to make a guess. But it, it'll, it'll certainly be several years. So, so the primary mechanism appears to be eating less. There, there is also a small increase in the, in the basal metabolic rate. So there is a little bit of an increase in fat oxidation. But from our studies, it appears that the reduction in food intake is the primary mechanism. Potentially, we, we could do that. Um, so, I mean, the way it's set up right now, it's not that way, but when we think about how to engineer it, we would want to make it susceptible. Not, not an antibiotic, they're already susceptible to antibiotic. But of course, if we did that, that would eliminate all of the gut bacteria, which would not be you know, that good of an approach. But what we could do is make them sensitive to uh, compounds that really wouldn't be antibiotics, but that would trigger in our engineered bacteria death. And so, so yes, so we could probably do that. Um, I don't think at the moment they do, but we're, we're, we're trying to figure that out. And it's very, I mean, I think this is very new. Um, it is on the cutting edge, and, and that makes it difficult from a regulatory standpoint to figure out what you actually need to have, what safety information you need to have. 